I know uh, the uh, logistics sometimes are a little tricky, aren't they? <laughs> uh, very. It can be challenging. <laughs> Oh, I am. I'm going to check on my ah, meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. Mm -hmm. All right. OK, let me hold on one second. Oh, 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 oh. we got it. There we go. Yeah, we are live. <laughs> I heard myself talking. Hey, guys. Hi, everybody. Um, I am live here today talking about some awesome things coming up. And I have somebody amazing with me today. If you are uh, watching us, please let us know where you're watching from. We would love to uh, know where you're watching from. Say hi to me and my guest, the amazing uh, Radine Williams Rod, thank you so much today for your time, for being willing to jump on here with me and talk about some awesome stuff today. Um, and for your time, I value who you are. I haven't known you very long yet. It's been uh, short, but it's been short and sweet. I'm, uh, I got to know Rod through our mutual friend, Dub Alexander. Dub, you are amazing. And uh, School of Kingdom. And I've been diving deep into uh, the Trinitarian faith and just the relationship that we are invited to with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And what all comes with that, who we are, all those things I'm always so excited about. But um, Rod, how are you today? Thank you so much for being on. Oh, I'm good. I'm really excited about uh, what you're starting up here and what your focus is. I think it's something that's very much needed. It'll be a real blessing to people. And I'm really honored to be able to participate with you in it. Yes. So the thing that um, we have designed is a program that is launching in January. It's called the True You um, in 2024. And really what I'm very passionate about is the new creation that we are and in Christ and Christ in you and the union that we share with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and just the benefits of that, that we can walk in all the realities and the truths of the that, that amazing invitation to a relationship, um, to live that every day in the fullness of that, that we don't have to wait until one day <laughs> when we're in the glory, right? But that yeah. every day because of who Jesus is and because of what he did, the finished work of what he did, we get to enjoy that every single day of our lives. And that is something I am very passionate about, uh, very passionate about uh, encouraging and inspiring people and calling out who they already are, the new creation, the true you. So um, today I just want to give you a little taste of, because there's different levels that you can choose and um, a little taste of the true you adventure. If you join me and some amazing people in the year of 2024, um, I want to give you a little taste of uh, what Rod carries, the father's heart that he has, and just um, what he is about. But Rod, tell us a little bit about what you have discovered about your original design uh, in Christ, Christ in you, and that union that we get to enjoy. Mm. Well, we've been through uh, a few different movements and, you know, viewpoints on this. We started out as in a fundamental group and uh, we're part of the Jesus 
people movement for a while and the vineyard and uh, other um, other churches and movements, house church movements and so forth. And I would say one of the things I appreciate about what you're focusing on is so much of what we've been inherited in Christianity is uh, toward and not from. In other words, we're we're always headed somewhere. We're never quite complete. We're never quite full. And uh, what I've found is that we become what we behold and we live from what we believe about ourselves at the core of our identity. And so the problem is we don't spend time presenting Jesus and what he accomplished and who we are in him which is basically the gospel. So if we don't behold it, if we don't present it, we can't behold it. If we don't behold it, we, we don't become it. We were just with our um, sort of honorary granddaughters that we've known from, uh, they, they grew up in our house church and uh, they moved up north and we were just with them. And one of the girls found uh, this duck that had been abandoned uh, uh, on the side of the road, right, and picked it up, and they, they kind of adopted it in the family. Well, the duck thinks that um, <laughs> her granddaughter is the mom, right? So when she runs, they just, they flock after her like you would see, you would see geese. And we've all seen these really cute animal videos online where, you know, a, a, a cat is raised by a dog or something, it thinks it's a dog, right? And so there's that bonding that happens because you're imprinted with an identity. In other words, you behold your origin and that's part of who you are. And part of our problem is we, we basically in our culture, we're given an origin that you're a random accident, you know, a bunch of atoms got together and you don't really have meaning. And if you ever see any of the science fiction movies, you see where they have the robot or the AI or whatever. And it says, where did I come from? And uh, they say, well, we made you. And then they say, well, where did you come from? And they go, oh, we don't know. We're just some kind of accident. And so what always happens <laughs> is the AI goes rogue and does a bunch <laughs> of bad things. Right. And in, and in a way, good, you know, good science fiction or good, good cinema uh, shows us ourselves, right? And that's why it's good because there's some truth in there. So part of our problem is humanity. And as individuals is we don't understand our origin. So we're not a random accident. We were born here. We're conceived in an ecstatic expression of love and union, but we came from uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the ultimate functional family who in their love created and spoke the worlds into existence. Jesus spoke everything into existence. We were part of that. So we were made by love for love hmm. and we are returning to love. And that's a much different view of yourself than, than uh, we've been given culturally, right? And so even right. though it, we, we're in the church, sometimes the church doesn't present a much better view of that. We, we present that um, we came from a lone, solitary monad God who's not loving by nature and has to be conditioned to love us, right, by a blood sacrifice of some sort. And so no matter how much we talk about intimacy with the Father, it's hard for us to really go there because we think he's not by nature love. And this is where focusing on origin as part of identity can really help us. So I like the idea that you have, let's take some time and focus on that, behold that, because a lot of our issues come from that. And yeah. anyone who's been a pastor or done man, ministry for, um, uh, which we, we've done several of those things over the years. <laughs> you, you, when you encounter people so often, the issues in their lives started when they were young by not mm. being imprinted with a good identity and not being loved unconditionally. This is why Jesus says, I don't call you servants. I call you friends, right? I don't call you uh, 
outsiders, I call you sons, right? I don't call you slaves. I call you sons. And, and in the world, you get a good identity by doing good behaviors. But in the kingdom, it works just the opposite. You're given yes. a great identity and you live out of that and have uh, you, you have better behaviors, right? If you believe you came from a loving, functional family, you're more likely to behave in a loving, functional mm -hmm. way. And this is where focusing on that for a period of time, I think, is will be really healing and really empowering for a lot of people. And that's that's a lot of what what you know our we do some itinerant ministry and work with Dub School and some other schools. And this is a lot of what we talk about is it's not we, you know, in the church so often we want the steps, we want the tools, we want something to do, but we don't want to sit still for a minute and behold and just talk about what's already been done. You see, the language of the gospel, the language of the kingdom, the language of our loving relationship with God is done, not do right um, it's a declaration yeah, yeah. Uh, not a proposition yes right so so yes. often we're given these things if you do this then that will happen and the, and and then our our eye is off the ball so to speak because where our eyes become on ourselves and not on uh who has already given us identity yeah. who's already given us an origin it's like we think we make god our father by our choice and behavior, but he made us sons and daughters by his choice. And he demonstrated in his behavior and being willing to lay down his life for us, that there is no limit to the love of God. He would go to the grave and not just to the grave, but back out of the grave uh, and bring us with him. We died with Christ. We we're buried with Christ. We we're raised with Christ and we're seated with Christ and mm -hmm. in, in, in the world and the enemy and all of our, the inputs in our lives will say sometimes, you know, but, 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 but <laughs> we can't just yeah. let, a, let a yeah. positive declaration uh, abide for a minute. It'll be okay yeah. if you just behold Jesus and what he's done and the yeah. fact that you're new in him. So part of what we want to talk about in, in these sessions that you, you have in mind is to unpack in more detail, original design. So it sinks in at a deep level and we, we believe it. Right. And then we, we want to look at our, who defines our identity. Mm. Right? Mm. Is it, do we define our identity by our behavior? Do people who criticize us define yeah. our behavior yeah. does culture define 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 not our behavior but our identity does culture yeah. define our identity the trouble with religion and politics is they have a lot of false identities that they they market you know now it's you know all you got to do to be virtuous is you put a little border around your facebook picture and oh my now you're virtuous right you're supporting the latest cause so we've gotten away from real virtue and really doing uh, good things out of a good identity into where, well, oh, I'll, I'll sell you an identity, but really what's, what's being sold to us is something that's being useful to them and their yeah. cause. And so that's why Jesus said, I call you sons, not slaves, because yes. religion and politics really wants you to be a slave to support them. And if there was ever a time that we needed to understand that it's now we don't have to be against anyone we, we can be for yes. everyone uh, uh religion and politics divides holy spirit yeah. unites yeah. and when we begin to see that we're all have the same origin paul says i bow my knees before the father in heaven from whom every family derives their name See how unifying that is if we say, hey, we all came from the same place. We all have the same goal. We all want to be loved. We all want to have the best for our, our spouses and our children. We all want to, to uh, uh, have what we need and be able to provide to others. That's our common ground, right? Yes. So yes. if we think 
if we think that God has two faces, one of mm -hmm. anger mm -hmm. and one of love, one of justice and one of mercy, mm -hmm. then we think it's okay for us to have two faces. This is why we have kind of these yeah. schizophrenic behaviors in life. Yeah. But Father, but God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit only operate in love. Late in life, the Apostle John in 1 John says that God loves so consistently that we can sum it up as to say God is love, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. God is yeah. love. And in our yeah. culture, we have people that we could sum it up as they are chaos walking into mm -hmm. a room yeah. or they are or their anger, or their self-righteousness, or their judgment. And if judging worked, and if putting yourself above others worked, the world would be a perfect place because you all you have to do is turn your phone on or go on television and someone will tell you what's wrong with you, yeah. right? Yeah. So if the answer was we need to criticize each other more, then we'd be perfect because we got mm -hmm. plenty of that. What we don't have, is someone who will look at us in love, see us as in, truly included in the in the humanity, which is included in Christ, and see that humanity, something happened in Christ that changed something yeah. deep in humanity. And that is what we need to return to and to discover. And I love that you're you're focusing on that and you're seeing that and you're excited about that because yes. that's what really transforms us. Not a new view of what we could be if we yeah. did this with all these conditions, but simply beholding that. Now, there are plenty of other things to do, you know, uh, other yeah. things to yeah. learn about. Like, uh, I yep. love the prophetic. Uh, yes. And, uh, I love healing. I love praying for the sick. Uh, I love the word of God, the, the, mm. the written word of God. Um, but we, I, I feel like this is a real neglected area of communication and focus in the church that you're zeroing in on. And for a lot of yeah. people, they can get lost in pursuing all these other spiritual disciplines sometimes and still not deal with, um, you know, yeah, those core yeah. identity issues. And you yeah. found that personally to be liberating, which is yes. why you're so excited about it and, yes. and empowering. Yes. And, well, and, and I, I really, and you, you mentioned that when you first started is that the, the big change in your perspective as you becoming what you behold and you behold correctly, right? Yeah. Sometimes there are versions of Jesus, there are versions of God that actually don't communicate the true nature of who Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are. And so you become, but maybe right. not actually who you are. And, you know, as it says, 1 John 4, 17, as he is, so are we in this world. And so right. when we behold him correctly, it becomes a reverence point where you get to discover all mm -hmm. the goodness and the glory that you're beholding in a mirror yep. that you now find the Christ in you, that you find mm -hmm. in yourself, you see, because mm -hmm. the Father reveals who Jesus is, but then Jesus is going to reveal who you are. And that cannot be anything connected to anything old or, or bound in slavery or orphan-like, because that is nothing like who he is in his nature. And yeah. so I really am excited to take people on the journey of not just discovering correctly who Jesus is, how good the Father is, how good Holy Spirit is, is yeah. so amazing. And, the, and the, the relationship that we get to experience, but really living from that, yes. not for it, but from that as a reference point and discovering all the amazing things that mm -hmm. come with that in who you are. 
That's right. And Jesus reveals who the father is. He says, if you've seen me, you've yes. seen the father. Yes. And part of part of what you were referring to that we beheld incorrectly is that somehow the father is different than Jesus. Mm. Somehow yeah. Jesus is not completely God. For example, we've been told that the, the most important thing to the father is he can't be in the presence of sin. Mm. So basically sin is a God above the father who dictates his behavior. There's a God named justice or something that, that he reports to before he can love you. And it has to be satisfied. And when you see that, is he God or is he not God, right? Is he creator or not creator? This is why the apostle John starts in John one with, in the beginning was the word, the logos, yeah. Jesus, and nothing was made that was not made by him so he if you've seen jesus you've seen the father so for example we've heard oh the father can't be in the presence of sin the difference is we run from god when we sin because our conscience is corrupted because innocence is necessary for intimacy mm. you know, any relationship and when we don't feel yeah. innocent we don't have relationships so yeah. we run from god then we project the fact that we run from God onto the father and say, well, he must run from us. Yeah. But what did Jesus come to reveal? He revealed that yeah. he went out of his way to be with sinners. We run from God when we sin. He runs to us when we sin and he is right mm -hmm. there. And yeah. so we have, we have to get it straight that only love that cannot be changed by your behavior has the power to change your behavior. And that's the wow. unconditional mm -hmm. love of God. You cannot, you do not dictate by your behavior, how God relates to you. He loves you. What parent wow. stops being a parent because their child has a problem or does something wrong or sins, whatever word you want to use. Right. Do right. you stop right. being a parent? No, we don't no. have the power no. to change God's, no. God's, uh, you know, how God views us. We're, we are his offspring. Paul says in Acts 17, he is not far from any one of us. Yeah. And you, people say, well, if you say that, you know, everybody's going to run out and do crazy things. But quite the opposite. The reason people do crazy things is because they don't see that no matter what you do, he's right there. He's never going anywhere. Yeah. You see, we've had a gospel. We've been taught that the gospel starts with separation. You're separated mm -hmm. from God. And then it's your job to say the right prayer and believe the right way. And then you're no longer separate from God. But you see, Jesus demonstrated in, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't yeah. wait till we got our act together. Or they had a really good yeah. worship service in the temple. He came and he died. How many times did he die? He died once. Who did he die for? He died for everyone. So what we're doing is we're believing what's already been accomplished by Jesus. God was in Christ Jesus reconciling the cosmos to himself, not counting men's sins against them, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. You see, we are reconciled with Christ. So now live reconciled with Christ. Yeah. And we are ambassadors of that reconciliation. And this mm. is a, a major mind shift for a lot of people mm. because Jesus said it's finished, but it's a work in progress for most, uh, most of what we've heard in the church. So yeah. this will be yeah. wonderful for people to take time mm. to focus on that. We, yeah. we tend to focus on lack, but yeah. um, of his fullness, we have received, you know, yeah. there, uh, there's yeah. so many scriptures that, that we could talk about yeah. with that but uh you know colossians uh, 2 9 and 10 yet it is in him that god gives full and complete expression of himself without the physical within the physical limits he set for himself within christ moreover your own completeness is only realized in him who's the authority over all authorities mm. and the supreme power over all powers so the power of Jesus lives in you. Come on. Yeah. And he is transforming you. Yes. And your yes. job is simply to behold that. Mm. Mm. And, and you will become that. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So <laughs> many, so many good 
Guys, if you are watching today, drop some love for Rod. I saw Melissa was on here. I saw Linda, Denise. Hi, everyone. Uh, hanging out with Rod today. Um, man, that, that innocence is necessary for intimacy. And the intimacy that we can experience with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it's it's amazing. It is, I feel like, and that that's also a big change and a shift that I believe still needs to happen where, you know, repentance, the true metanoia shift that happens because of his goodness that leads yes. us to that, right? It's not some, some depressing thing it's actually you turning your face to the father and discovering all the goodness that is in him and mm -hmm. it's just it's like since we're almost christmas right we're in the christmas season <laughs> mm -hmm. it is like christmas morning mm -hmm. every day of your life where you get to renew and be transformed by that renewing and and by his goodness of discovering, and it's like joy and peace and freedom. And, and those things are yours. They are yours in your original design, your true identity, the true you that you are. And we could be talking, I could be talking with Rod about this for you know, a long time because there's so much to unpack, unpack right? When you yes. go on that journey and yeah. you behold Jesus, we're going to behold him for eternity, right? And it's when it's going to take forever to experience the glory and the goodness. Um, so there's a lot you can unpack and talk about. And Rod is going to do that um, in the program that I am launching. I'm going to quickly um, share my screen here for a second to give you um, just some information about the True You adventure that we're going on now there's a level one where you get to go on the journey with me um in a facebook group you get community i'm gonna go live in there and we're gonna go on this amazing journey of discovering really your original design walking in the new creation that you are every single day of your life and experiencing the freedom and the joy and the peace that comes with that and then the true you adventure, you get a lot of this goodness and more of Rod, uh, Dr. Tony, Dub, Ryan, Brian Orm. There's going to be more that I will uh, share later. And then there's a level three where you can go one-on-one, uh, -on -one, uh, where we will just process what that looks like for you, prophetic insights, all of those things. Um, it is starting in January. I am so excited. Um, the link is in the comments. But Rod, I'm just, it is so rich to know that really that, that you, you get to do out of your being. Yes. And, and to really experience that innocence of how he sees us yes. and to more and more get to view ourselves, view him through his eyes as we're face to face with him. Any um, last words? Uh, I wanted to tell people to, if they want to connect with you, where can they connect? I know you, you travel a lot. You, uh, you are a professor in School of Kingdom with Dub and Ryan, which is amazing. Uh, you mm -hmm. run with people like John Crowder and Baxter Kruger and your different places. So if people want to connect with you and um, hear more of the goodness that you carry. Um, but any last words that you want to tell people about? 
<laughs> well, you can connect with us uh, on Facebook. It's Rodine Williams, R-O-D-E-E-N. And Rodine comes from Rod, my name, and Eileen, my uh, wife's name. So we combined them together and call it Rodine. And um, I'm also on X at um, Delta Kinos, D-E-L-T-A-K-A-I-N-O-S. Or you can just search for Rod Williams or Rodine Williams. And um, we post um, something almost every day along the lines of what we've been talking about. And um, we do uh, travel to uh, and, and do some speaking. And um, we also just go to events that we love with John and, and Dub. Uh, we were in Dallas with them and, uh, and up in San Antonio last year. And um, this coming weekend, we'll be in Fort Wayne, Indiana with Baxter, John Crowder, and um, Matt Spinks um, having an Advent celebration that starts uh, next Friday night. And that's going to be a good time. And um, so if you're in that area, look up on, yes, uh, on. on uh, johncrowder.net. Uh, I believe he has a uh, an announcement on that or Matt Spinks, uh, S P I N K S. And that's going to be a good time to talk about these things in the context of the incarnation of Jesus. And just, you know, one last thing, this season is a good time to meditate on the fact mm -hmm. that Jesus did not come into this world just as a necessary prelude to a blood sacrifice to an angry mm -hmm. God. He came into this world to show us the true face of his father, to show us that we are loved, to declare that we are sons, not slaves, and to show us the goodness of God, and then to include us in his life. He was so inclusive to the, all the wrong people, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, we, we died with him. Mm. We were buried with him. And we were raised with him. All our false identities, all the harsh words spoken over us, all those things died with Christ. Yeah. And what came yeah. out of the grave was a new you, a new creation. Yes. And so I hope you'll yes. join uh, Esther and me and uh, all the other uh, folks who um, are going to give you a, a good shot in the arm <laughs> of the goodness. <laughs> Yes. The goodness of God yes. that, will, that will be a blessing to you. Come Look forward on. to seeing you all. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Rod, um, uh, for your time and just imparting some of that goodness. And if you want to go on that journey with us, um, on the adventure, if you want all the goodness of the speakers, it is $50 a month. You can go to the link and the website will give you all the uh, details of that. But um, I'm just very excited for you to walk in the truth of who you are and the original you, the original design that Jesus came to redeem and restore in him and him in you. Um, so that's it for today, guys. Go check it out. Thank you, Rod. Go check Rod out. He always shares such good things. And um, we will see you later. Bye. Bye-bye.